but we were going to talk about um, accessibility and, and the things that are already built into Milo and um, this accessibility. Oops this accessibility menu um, off on the right of my screen that is a, technically a third party um, widget. So let's just go ahead and kick that off. Um, I'm going to start with the built in stuff. So just taking my about page as an example, um, I'm first going to talk about the headings. Um, obviously with the, the text features, we, we know that they're a bit limited, um, as far as the WYSIWYG toolbar, um, options. And that was actually done intentionally to also help with accessibility, um, making fonts available in different colors can often make it harder visually. So, um, that was kind of the main drive for making, um, those options kind of as limited as they are. You always have the ability to use HTML to further customize um, beyond the formatting options that are here. Um, but these are a great way to start your um, foundation, I guess. So with the heading styles, um, it's always best to have them in a logical order. So you want to th think of your page um, to be um, laid out in a way like an outline. So um, each section should follow in that logical order. So if you have, I, I, I've started off my page with the heading three, um, but actually the most logical thing would be to start with a heading two. I don't know what else to write there. Um, the heading one is actually taken by your page title. So that's you know, built in, we don't have to um, set anything to a heading one because the site does it for you. The heading two, you know, it's just a logical order. Um, what I also like to do if I have, you know, multiple sections within a heading two, you, you keep them, um, you know, going within that same order. Once you jump back to a heading two, it's almost like the start to a new section, similar to like an outline. Um, and I can continue using, well, why don't we go ahead and, and add a few more? Um, this is not the most logically written page to, you know, cut up into sections. Let me go ahead and check another page in our site here. We do have an example here. Um, so we start out with the heading two and then it moves on to the heading three. Um, if there were additional kind of, you know, if studies were included on this page, it might take on a heading three style because it is, you know, tied to our issues, similar to program planning, but not a, uh, a subject of just specifically program planning. So um, the headings are available, but it's also partly um, how you, you're you making use of them and, and sectioning things out logically. With images, um, you're probably aware that the alt text is already a required thing. Um, Let's just see if I can upload one here. So depending on, these are probably not the best images for example, um, but depending on the content of your image, um, it will, it will like, sway what you will write in the alt text. So um, obviously my image is not only like something actually to describe, there's flowers, there's hands, there's uh, a piece of paper, but there's also text. So the alt text 
we have a little description too. Um, it's used by screen readers, search engines, and when the image won't load. So we add alt text to improve accessibility, but also SEO. Um, and so the search engines are looking for alt text um, to make sure that the images are credible and actually are, you know, used in a um, usable manner on the on the site. The other obvious thing is that the screen readers are for folks who have low or no visual. Um, so they're completely reliant on those um, alt text descriptions. Um, so, you know, sometimes we might have images that are a little more simple. It is simply just a photo of, you know, a scene or a group or, or a person. Um, and those are just describe them as straightforward as you can. Um, they don't have to be super detailed. I can't um, find any actual better examples of a photo, but why don't we just, you know, go with what we have. Um, I'm going to type in the text and actually just do myself a favor and copy this. So, whoops. That is usually what I would do is focus on the text. You can, you know, just take it a step further. And if you describe the scene as well, um, there is no limit of alt text. Um, I have never seen a rule of it will hinder SEO or anything if you over describe. Um, I think with all things, brevity is better. Um, so the ultimate decision is always up to you. But since alt text is required, know that it is a a worthwhile thing and obviously needed thing to fill in. Um, just gonna say florist with paper. Um, okay, and I'm just choosing the rest of these just to get quickly through that. But alt text is super important. Whoops, I forgot to say I have permission. And there we are. So um, that's the other good thing. I didn't realize we could also make a quick change to the alt text from here. So say you've already dropped in the image um, into your page, but you can make edits to that through the, I guess, kind of embedding page. OK. And then. I did want to talk Can about. Can we go back? Yes. Um, so, first of all, um, I, I kind of lost you when you got to that what you call the embedding page. I I don't remember doing that with pictures. Maybe I didn't quite understand what you were doing. Let me go back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I use pictures all the time, so I don't. I didn't save that page, but it's okay. I'm going to add in another picture. And this is with any picture, even if it's, you know, just uploaded now or like one of these, I'm just yeah. choosing one that's already uploaded. You get to this page, the embedding page. You know, um, maybe it depends on where you're putting it in, but I don't get this. I only get this when I'm doing PDFs or I mean, oh, are you adding this to the media library? I am adding it to a like a paragraph box. So it only happens yes. there. Let's say you are on. I never get that unless I'm uh, adding a PDF or uh, putting it in the media library. Maybe that's what it is. Are you usually... I don't get it either, but I just use a cut and I just do a, a copy and paste and it comes in. Well, I selected it. You know, it'll say choose There's something about yeah. going to your own computer and, and getting it. It's just there's, interesting. Yeah, there's different there's different places to use an image. So why was using it in the middle of a paragraph? So like in the middle of oh. content, I was dropping okay. an image in. Okay. But there is a difference when let's say like the main image field or a slideshow image. Yeah, sorry. If you're adding it there, the embedding page won't show up. So yeah. that okay. might be that the difference there. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Can I throw in a question? 
when yeah, I'm to trying to do that in the middle of a page, but, yeah, I sometimes so want text to the right of it. Where is the alt text going to show up on a screen reader? And where else can you put like the cut line so that it doesn't automatically go beneath the picture? As far as being able to wrap the text around the picture? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah. If you're doing a sample, please do it that way. For sure. Right. Thank you. Did anybody need to right. see me add the picture through alternate hero image? How I was saying it's a bit different than adding it through content. I'll just go straight to content. Okay, no, I think I saw a, a nod in, in um, confirmation. So sure, why not? Yeah, I'll, let's go I'll for it. Go through both then. Thank you guys. So let's just choose the one that's most recent. When I clicked when I click submit, it didn't take me to that embedding page because usually we'll see it here now. When I go through and we add an image this way, I'll just add the same one to make it exactly the same. I hit submit and then I'm taken to this secondary page. This is okay. the difference um, and then submit. So the question so I have was, a question. I yeah. have a question. So I'm always thinking, do I put full content, quarter, thumbnail? Do you have like the sizes that go along with that? Because, you know, where you, when you go back to the embed, it, it asks you what size. I usually go with um, a quarter size. And then that seems to work when I'm on my um, sidebar. Um, and then I can adjust it a little bit, you know, with the, um, you know, the, the, little... the outline that comes up around it. Yeah. But what, you know, when it, it's... it does depend on the original image size. So it's hard to okay. say for quarter size, the thumbnail, um, I, I am not exactly sure. I think it's somewhere around 150 or 250 like square, um, pixels. Okay. Mm -hmm. but I, I may be able to look that up to see if there are, you know, true sizes related to it. Okay. Yeah. It would be helpful to kind of know just so you're, you know, when you're thinking about it and when it says, um, full content, wait, go back to that. Mm -hmm. scroll down. Is full, what does it mean by full content? Like the whole image, like, yeah, so it's, it's just, reduced. it okay. is the same as original size. Yeah. So it is, okay. mm -hmm, it is not reduced coming in as, as the uh, true, uh, you know, dimensions. Um, I mean, fitting to the page as well. So um, it's not, even if the image were larger than our, you know, width of 800 pixels, it's going to at least fit to that width, but then proportionately still be its full size. And when would you use link? What is that? I use it all the time for um, a PDF. Um, for the PDF, it will oh. automatically come up as a link. So you, you know, okay. could leave it as full content regardless. Okay. But if you wanted an, a link to an image, you could do that. Like, let's do that now. Okay. Maybe I do that I've too. I've never long. used that before. If you oh. were ever trying to share images, this would be an easy way to do it. Um, where you have them uploaded to the media library. You don't have to go and copy the link every time. Instead of having it display as full content or thumbnail, I see. Um, then it would display, uh, display as a link. But now that I have it displaying as a link, I might not be able to pull up the embedding page again. Yeah, but that's okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, use that, that link when I have it like this, when I have a, a flyer that goes with the, like an announcement or an event. So the link works well. Because you can and then they're whatever. able to see it in full size on the next page, you know, that, yeah. Yes, yeah. It's a good way, especially if you're shrinking down an image where you feel it might not be as easy to read or, or see fully. Um, let me go ahead and add it. Oh, just an to, to, at a point there, usually I would assume it's like everybody else. Somebody sends you a flyer saying, can you please post this to the website and the Facebook? So you take enough of the content from the flyer to create an event or, or news, of, and then you have the link to the flyer so they can get more information. That's usually how I get it. So I'm not sure how everybody else on the call gets their information. It's usually, you know, make something out of this. 
<laughs> right. You know, I'm glad you brought this up, Mike, because I've never thought to do that. Thank you. Yeah, if you go a look at my, uh, gosh, I hate to say this. I, I, I actually haven't been here that long. But if you go to <laughs> League of Women Voters BCC, I've, I've got some examples out there. Look okay, at some of the I, old yeah, calendars. I will go there for sure. Because somebody on this call helped me do all of that work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Sanders' awesome. idea that she wants to know what size a quarter size is, it really, de I, as, as Marie said, it really depends on the size of the original image, I would think. So you can, she can't tell you it's going to be 200 pixels, I don't think. I think it, you know, it, if it's like... 20 if it's like a thousand it'll be 250 maybe but but you it's, it's variable it depends on the original image right you i think so i well i think it even could be um that the quarter size does really depend on the original image but that thumbnail maybe it's controlling uh, yeah, one side means. and then it proportionally does the other side um to where if, let's say you upload an image that's like 50 by 50 pixels, thumbnail might blow it up to whatever it's set at. Um, right. I'm just not exactly sure. But yeah, Liz, I think you're you're on to something for sure. Um, but yeah, I wanted to go ahead and um, go with Jean's uh, question. I have this easy voter guide image dropped in. I just right now changed the display to thumbnail. Um, Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. let's just copy some of this text from down below so we can go over that. Okay, so that's just what it looks like when we type um, directly next to an image in the same line. Um, we want to wrap this image or the text around it, but we're going to control the image. Um, and under styles, we want to just decide where we want it to float. So whether left or right, it will um, jump to that. Let's say, whoops, why isn't it not selecting? Oh, it was, okay. There we go. So I hit the eraser and then float left. Okay, you thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's the nice feature. You also are able to Let's see, does left justify do it as well? Left justify and right justify, I believe, are an option. Whoops, sorry, I forgot to erase. Um, the difference between the float and the justifies are that the float gives a little bit of padding between the image and the text, but both um, should work in that way to wrap the text around your image. Okay, did anybody have any other questions while we're in Does here? Does anybody and... use um, captions? I haven't, because I, captions for images. Have you used those before? I, I tried to do that because I thought, it, but it was weird. I wasn't sure how to control the size of it. It's like, it seemed too big or I don't know. Is there a way to control you do have a, text a, or? a little bit of control. Um, so I'm adding just some text. The float, again, is to allow you to make the image float left or right. Mm -hmm. So you can control that from there or not. But let's just insert that. Um, it does look funky here on WYSIWYG. I'm going to leave it like this so we can see what it looks like in the front end. I think our system does pretty good of... Um, making it look better than it does here. But um, to then control the size, what mm -hmm. I do is uh, highlight the whole thing. And then under format, I just deselect paragraph. So it's selected and oh. I deselect it. Um, oh. The other option is to, you know, go back. I have it highlighted and just select, no, DIV is not the way. Okay, so forget that. Just deselect paragraph. Um, and that should downsize your text a little bit. Um, I'm not sure 
how else it might look. If you wanted to have multiple lines, I would suggest shift enter instead of a regular enter right. or return. Um, let's yeah, go ahead it's, and it's, test it's that shift out. Shift to change it to, to DIVs from paragraph to DIV when you did that. Yeah, and the caption itself is created by a separate DIV. And so that's why when oh, okay. I, instead of deselecting paragraph, when I selected DIV directly, it kind of broke the, the caption off of it. Um, so there's the, the little workaround. It does seem like the text did come back to paragraph size though, now looking at it compared to the rest of the text. I think one way to get around that would be to leave it um, saved as full HTML. Yeah. You could always go back and make changes in WYSIWYG, but then saving it in full HTML might be the way. Let's just try that. But um, Sandy, you had a question, another one? I'm sorry, maybe I'm the only person, I don't know what DIV does or is, sorry. Um, it is just a container. Um, I don't know why in our system it recognizes it as smaller text, but I guess that's just like our, our benefit. Um, but a DIV uh, is really simply just to contain a section. Um, okay. that, that's an HTML tag. Um, but our system uh, recognizes DIV text as it, a bit different than how the paragraph text displays. The paragraph text displays um, a little bit larger and has the padding between uh, when you hit the enter key um, and DIV does not, it's a bit more condensed. I always thought that was kind of the default. So I'm, I'm always changing, uh, what is a paragraph to, to DIV, you know, when I want it to be regular font. I see. What I call I mean, regular font. Yeah, it, it, it all depends um, because with just, uh, sentences or you know paragraphs like this it might make sense to have them in paragraph because they have that nice natural larger mm -hmm. break in between uh-huh if we do div oops, that's the difference there so it isn't much difference when we are just writing continuously but once you hit that enter key it div condenses the space in between huh so, and then the font, the, was, I thought the font was different too, but I'll have to look at it later. Usually it's for headings that I'm looking at it. The other difference um, too, is if like in the caption where we saw the, the text even get smaller, it happens in tables too, I believe. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so this is paragraph. And then that's DIV. Yeah, Mary Jo, that's what I do too. So I play around between paragraph and diva, DIV yeah. to change the font size. Yeah. The yeah other and, and, and you're right, and, and to get rid of the, sometimes the space between paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you do a space bar, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or but, whatever. Or yeah, the shift enter. Turn. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, since, yeah. you're on, since you're on tables, <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, I'm like always. How do you make the the um the rows narrow, narrower? You know, so that I don't. You know, I have a table of text, and I can't. You know, there's just so much space with each row. How do I make the rows more condensed? They will be as big as your largest item in whichever, you know, cell or row or column. So if if you have something or like an image or text that is quite long and going up and down, then the that entire row will have that same width, if that makes sense. Um, but if it's just lines, so if it's just one straight line of text. You can't you can't make the rows any narrower than one, you know, there's just a limit to that. If you there so, isn't a way, let's see, let me try and add just an example table. I'll add a two by two. Uh, 
Um, yeah, it just seems, I don't know. Um, this is where I would play. With, oh, this is where I'd play with the spaces on the, the style of the text. Oh, yeah. I think if you do a division, it's going to, to be, um, or a paragraph, there's going to be spacing. Yes. Because there's spacing between a paragraph. Okay. So I usually mm -hmm. highlight the text and move it down to, to DIV, and that makes it the smallest I can get it. Oh, okay. I think I see what you guys are saying. Yeah, so if you have um, a cell that has a lot more text or uh, an mm -hmm. image, DIV for the text is a way to make that cell smaller. Oh, perfect. That's what I needed. Oh, okay. you guys are so smart. Yeah, because what I did is I built a table like she had up earlier with the uh, – with the the rates for either uh, individual or a group membership, but then across the bottom, I wanted to tell people when where the uh, cycle was. This covered from January to December and had to be paid for like uh, just January thirty first the following year. Gotcha. So I, you want to have that sort of like a footnote type spacing, and that's what I played with the, the DIV space. Okay. Yeah, and Shift Enter will be your best friend too there if you're um like here if you wanted to break it at a certain point this might be oh, okay. another way to make it, oh, gotcha. it will be longer but then it will be not as wide so you have some you know playing around with there yay while we're looking at this mm -hmm. i um household members does does anybody have in their league a definition of household members it's more than two people uh, there is on, on my website yeah, somewhere. I'd have to go look at it. Yes, we have it in St. Louis. It's still it's additional family members. So, so they pay that that amount for um, for like four members of their family. No, each person add <coughs> add. It's you keep adding to it, but like it's you start only about out with half the household. price. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's so, interesting. Um, so if you have four uh, members, yeah, it would be the first dollar amount and then the difference. Whoever is talking in the background. Sorry, that's me. No, I mean, sounds like somebody's got people in the office. Yes, I'm in the office oh. and there's a lot of people. Yes, we have 75 uh, for one member, goes up 35 for the next well, member. Well, figure out how much difference. 65 for four. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so it's not limited to two. So no, if you have grown children or whomever. Thank you. We actually have members of three people for one family, so I know. <laughs> awesome. You're okay. in that category. It makes it a little more complicated when you make the website. <laughs> well, and it's going to change a little bit when the national the new process goes in. I just read about it today, so. Well, it's not our problem anymore then. Right. It, it won't be. <laughs> okay. I wanted to um, just jump to the accessibility menu. We can definitely um, continue questions after that. I don't think it'll take us too long. First, I wanna show it off. Um, when I give you the code to pop into your site, um, which I'll go over in our demo site. Um, you won't have to do anything after plugging in the code. Um, oh, awesome. Thanks, Jean. Um, but the accessibility menu offers a way to um, see how it works. Uh, but I would imagine that most folks who are in need of it probably would recognize it. Um, so it offers all these different um, kind of visual options. Um, just going to click through a couple of these. And how did you get that? You're going to tell us how you got that on there later? Yes, yes. I'll go okay. over how to right. um, right. implement yeah. it. All right. Um, it offers different font styles. Um, bigger text just zooms in the page for them. Hmm. 
um, the alignment of the text, the line height to, you know, all these different things um, to make it easier for folks to travel the site. And it doesn't require them to have, you know, a compatible browser or um, have some kind of something downloaded to their uh, device. It will already be here for them to use. So that's not something that will help us look, uh, you know, have that up, look at our website and say, oh, I need to do this to make it better. This is no, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. It is for the user um, yeah. to help them travel your site. Yeah. Thank you for that one. Yeah, that, that is a good distinction. Um, okay, so on the demo site, um, I obviously have it already implemented. So I'll show you where I've plugged that in. I'm on my homepage. I'm going down to the sidebar content. And I've just added a third party embed code section to the sidebar embed code. So where specifically I've added it, where did I add it? Oh. Here, oh, but let's show you what it actually looks like. This is after I've saved my um, entry, but I wanna show you this is what the um, code is that I would give to you. I'm gonna drop it in the chat, but know that I, I, I will have it you know, available if you ever need it again. Um, but it's just a simple script, um, very short. And that's all you would do is add it to a, a third party embed code box. Even if it were an additional formatted text, it's okay. But just make sure it's set to full HTML before you paste it in. Um, after saving it, you may notice that it'll change its look. This is what it ended up growing to because um, I added in this simple line previously. Let's actually just remove this one and we can go through a true test of it. So I just added it um, at the bottom. It really doesn't matter in what order you add that um, paragraph because it's always gonna display that accessibility menu on the right corner of your screen. Oh, okay. So I'll So publish. can you go through one more time how you got there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. to set the HTML. I mean, tell, me, tell us all that. For sure, I'm gonna actually remove um, the accessibility menu widget so that we can start super fresh. So let's save it without that. Yes. Okay. So hmm. I'm opening, I'm on my homepage and I'm opening a new draft or edit draft if you have an existing draft. I am copying the script that I dropped in the chat. So I have that on my clipboard and I'm going to come down, scroll down to the sidebar content section. Mm -hmm. Once we open that up, you may or may not have um, paragraphs already added here to the sidebar embed code. If you do, if you don't, it's okay. But we come down to add a new one um, if you need. I actually have an empty one, so either way. Uh, but we want to make sure it's set to full HTML here. If you have text there, just replace it with that script. Mm -hmm. And let's go ahead and publish to save since we made a change to the sidebar. You got to publish that to be able to see it. And there okay. we are. Awesome. And it, yeah, it pops oh, up oh, immediately. Oh. Um, and let's just check out what that looks like. So I'm just coming back again to the sidebar content section. Okay, it's still the script. And that's okay, regardless of if it changes or not, I'm not sure why my code was looking different previously, um, but the fact that it pops up, that's your you know, success message. Why well, does it well, end up on the right-hand side? Because to me, the sidebar was the left-hand side. That the location of it is controlled through the user way app that I have set up. So that's just globally set. Okay. Can, can you lower the screen so I so we can see what it's the whole thing, or bring it up a little? Yeah, bring it 
I, it, it's fixed. Its location is fixed. But and does it use up more space on your website then? Does it take some space away from your uh, right side? No, it's not um, moving anything over. Um, that's the natural margin of our site. And so it's just within that. Can you just slide your bar down a little bit just so I can just. I can, yeah. but it's not oh. going to move oh, the menu. Oh, I see what, I see what you're it's saying. It's fixed okay. on the page, yeah. Because you can't even, all I see is accessibility, but obviously there's something written underneath it. What happened? On my phone, it does what show happened? up on the left. Isn't that what? interesting? It may be different settings for mobile. I'm not sure, but I have set it to be on the right. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's good to be down on the right because it's distinctive. And for people who need that, it will be easy for them to find. It doesn't get caught up in the rest of the menus. Yeah, that that is, I mean, the, the world is usually used to right-handed folks. So I think folks are usually looking I'm off to that. I know, me too. I am too. That's why I, I said it with a bit of disdain. So, <laughs> um, But yeah, uh, I'm noticing also that the accessibility menu on the phone, it not only shows up on the left, but it just says simply accessibility. So I'm not sure if um, it has something to do with cash maybe, but I will, I will look into that because obviously we want to have it uh, consistent um, and Jean, did you see that on your site or was that this demo site? Yeah, it was on our LWVSTL site. Okay. Thank you. I will, I will, um, check into the user way app to see what's going on there. Mary Jo, I'll put it on. I thank you. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering <laughs> if we could see the person who just put it on, see her page. Yeah. Let's, let's put you on display. LW St. Louis. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I I don't like it that you can't see the whole logo. I don't I don't understand. Is it because of the zoom screen? It may just be Oh, I don't know. I, but I know you said on the phone it looks okay, but it just looks funny. I mean, you know, it looks people are gonna want it. I, but you're not able to see menu? Are you only able I'll to see accessibility? All I see is a blue box. Okay, I see the uh, social media stuff, share. But off to the right. And to what the right, see? I have a blue box. And the only word I could see is accessibility, but I could tell there's something underneath it because it looks like two dots. I see, tell okay. There's more information. It just looks funny. Why wouldn't it be up higher? I, I don't, it just looks is, funny. Is, is it, are you, are you on your phone? No. Are You're you viewing, the are you viewing, um, the actual size of the page maybe you've bl you're blowing some no yeah, like is is your browser window maybe large a little bit larger or it's full size so you're under screen? yeah under view you, in your browser you can put it to actual size or you can zoom in oh, I, have, well, I, have no, I have no idea what you're talking about well okay. every browser you can zoom in or zoom out or have the actual i guess size. i don't do that okay if you do control well, maybe you are doing plus it. or minus <laughs> to see if you're zoomed in or not. I love all your pictures. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. What? They're great. Judy is yeah. saying that she's loving um oh, yeah. LDV yeah. Metro St. Louis's pictures. Yeah. yeah. yeah I wish I had proud of pictures. our volunteers. <laughs> well, I keep asking people to take pictures and they don't. And they're, oh, sorry. Or they no. take a landscape when you really need portrait. I know. <laughs> or vice versa. I well, edited but, a lot of photos to make them I, the right edited, size for a slideshow. I edited about 90% of what they send me because they usually have about 90, you know, over 50% of the pictures, the ceiling. <laughs> I said, come on. <laughs> I, maybe they don't know how. <laughs> We should suggest that training for Kayla Vicks at the national office, how to train volunteers to get good photos. Well, yeah. good luck with our group. <laughs> Sorry. That, that would be awesome. <laughs> hey, well, the only 
the only person in our whole league, I think, that's really computer savvy is our high school kids. <laughs> I mean, we have a high school girl who's going to help me with the web page. Mm -hmm. Finally. Oh, you awesome. know, I'm, I'm looking at St. Louis on my phone. And it's funny, the only place, it's, it's weird because the word accessibility in a rectangle shows up on the left-hand side, but it's like not part, it doesn't look like it's part of the website. It's like it's added to it. I don't it know is floating. Okay. So we'll have it's Amherst floating. look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is yeah. that what you, is that what you have? Yeah, that's what we were saying, it, we noticed. So oh, I'll take a look okay. at that. Okay, interesting. Huh. Hmm. Did anybody have any questions? You can jump back to questions if y'all have any. Well, now that I'm looking at this this website, I, I want to figure out how to put my donate and join at the top like this. This is kind of good. I'll have to play with it. Yeah. We still well, have can... people complain that we don't have a good website either. So I'm glad to hear some compliments. Yeah, you can always come Yours here and, and get compliments. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, I have Let a question. Me, yes, uh, Sorry, I, I also want to show Mike in case he was interested in um, changing themes, but I do have your name down, Sandy. Um, that is not where I want to go. When you say themes, you mean the color thing, red, mm -hmm. gold, and purple? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so my site might actually be looking a little funky once I change the color, but that's okay. So I'm back on my home page. I've made a new draft. It is going to be under advanced settings. I just looked at my phone on this. I kind of like the accessibility over there in the left because once you hit it, it gives you a choice. And if you really need it, that's important. Yeah, no, I think it is important having it there. I think if I can do anything about making it look a little more um, in line with our content, um, then it'll improve, you know, the way it looks. But yeah, I, I agree with having those options on the phone too is, is really yeah, nice. It is. Well, I just made it larger and it looks great. <laughs> so, all right. Awesome. Okay. So then within advanced settings, the colors with which your theme or league displays the theme. Um, we change that to purple and gold. Whoops. Purple and gold. And I jump to the bottom so that I can change the moderation state to published and then save. Told you it was going to look a little funky. Obviously, you would have just one set of buttons, um, like how we saw Metro St. Louis <laughs> have. Um, but th that's the way to make the change. Um, and then you would immediately have your buttons. Let me just go back to a nice looking purple and gold site. You would have your donate and join buttons. Mm -hmm. But is that is that is that available for both the the menus on the top and on the left yes the okay. yeah right now we are still dealing with the 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 sites that have the top menu unfortunately have the side menu as well which is just a bit overkill as we're seeing um but we're still we're working on that well sometimes it's nice to have it over there once you get in one of the, the areas only, the only time it's well we have that set up so that when you have like this, where the main menu item has child links, it pops up this secondary menu and that looks beautiful, but then this does not. So it's overkill for menus display. I see. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I have that. I don't think I have that. Well, if you have your menu set up in this way where the main menu items have child links, it no, will I do. Like that. Yeah. yeah. No, I just meant the thing underneath. Met well, all top menu sites, I think, are affected. I haven't seen mm -hmm. any um, exceptions so far, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. huh. But we are, you know, trying to see what is causing that. Because what, at least what I've attempted so far, has not um, brought any re different result, unfortunately. Is this a new issue? Or I, 
it's been happening, I think, for a couple of weeks. Um, we did oh. have somebody um, reach out in the Google group, I think, maybe last week or two weeks ago. I'm not exactly sure. But um, we have it as now the top priority since we were able to resolve the double buttons issue. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I didn't ha know about that. I guess I was out of <laughs> touch. <laughs> well, the good thing is that... Um, on mobile, it really isn't apparent because they would get um, on mobile a different menu anyway. Uh, but obviously, it's it's still something we're, you know, hoping to resolve as quick as we can. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot a of menu. I mean, it gives more folks the ability, the chance to get to where they need to from your menu. Um, but I think most people don't need that much on their site. Well, it also depends if you have a lot of items, sub menus there, then that pushes it down. You may not even notice it. Mm -hmm. Or or does it scroll? How does it scroll? <laughs> no, it is how you said it just pushes the second menu down further. Right. But but then when you scroll, will it keep that at the same place or does it go? Can you just scroll that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It doesn't. All right. I, thank you. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that happened to my website. I just checked. <laughs> that's that's what I did. I, I just know. checked. I'm like, oh, gosh. Yeah, it's only those with the top menu. Yeah. OK. And what was happening to those people? Because we don't we just have a side. Yeah, they are having an additional main menu. So what happens oh. when you have the top menu, you're switching. Instead of having your full menu display on the left, you're switching for it to display across the top. But yeah. now what we've discovered is it's not a switch. It's a you're yeah, displaying it's a, them both. Got it's it. It's displaying across the top and on the left. So okay. even if you have what we call this is a secondary menu. Whoops. This about is a smaller secondary menu. We allow the top menu folks to display a secondary menu because it's nice to have the child links available, um, you know, without having to hover right. and click through. But then once this issue came about of having this main menu still showing up on the left, it mm. pushes your sidebar further down yeah. and the search bar as well. So, um, mm. yeah. So back to the accessibility on my phone, when I look at the Metro St. Louis and I click accessibility, it asks me to log into user way. Yeah, I, I didn't get go farther yeah i don't know what when you click on accessibility it does not bring up the menu no it just asks me to log in to user way uh can you go back at the top because when i click um accessibility and then i click manage then it asks me to log in is it possible that you accidentally right. double clicked no well i'm just using my finger I just do you see at the top log into user way? Yeah. Do you see a little carrot pointing to the left? Yep. Click on that. That's to go back. Do you see the accessibility menu after clicking that little carrot? I see the whole thing. I don't see any part of the website. Right, because it's bringing up the accessibility menu. So oh, you would so have to make your selections on your accessibility options and then oh, click no. the X. But that isn't a good user interface. I don't think that you have to go back to find the thing you're looking for. I don't, I mean, it should be, I, I think that that's something you should consider on a phone. How would you even think to, I don't know, how, why would you think to do that? Go back is kind of standard. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you click the accessibility menu, you immediately see the options. So I don't know yeah. why the login, the login screen should not have been the immediate response. I think that manage <laughs> might have been clicked because it's immediate. It's right there in the same um, place as the accessibility button is. Um, well, well, once you once I, you do once you get it into that tool, then you don't see that login anymore. Well, so I didn't see the password. login. Right. What did you use for a password? 
You I don't didn't... need to log in. You have to click accessibility and don't click anything else and you'll see the menu options. Yeah, I didn't get a login thing. I just, on the phone, I just clicked it and it opened up the whole menu options. Well, yeah. yes, but on the bottom of the page, it says manage options. That's when you get a login. And what you, I think is it was- You shouldn't do that. Yeah, I think it, accessibility was pressed. And since the your finger position yeah. could accidentally still click, manage is right under your finger. That's what I'm thinking happened because you do not yeah. get prompted with well, a login I see, screen. I see what you mean. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. But it That's... does take over your screen on a smaller mobile device. But that yeah. X is there in the top right corner. So it's it may, you know, surprise folks. But again, it, it's not going to be that they're at a loss. But oh, it, I was, this, I was well, at, a I'm at a loss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but do you think, Amber, that um, people who are used to using the accessibility menu, this is expected? They're 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 done it before. I think so. Um, I get I get the point of you know it its interface on the phone um, is a little more different because it's a bit more of a takeover of the screen. Um, but I mean, but I know, think for, for all of us here, we've, we've never done it. So it's, it's totally new and it's confusing, but I would think for people who normally use an accessibility menu, this is like old hat. Yeah. I, kind of I, like I, versus the first day of, you know, working on the website versus now where we only ask half as many silly questions. <laughs> well, we'll have to see how our users respond to it because having it sit there all the time and you're not, you don't need it, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna put it in and just see if people complain, say, what's that accessibility menu? I mean, <laughs> for the people on phones, I think they're the ones who will be a little, surprised well i'll see it, it looks well, like great functionality yeah yeah we, we have a translate like, button and nobody's do. asked the question yeah well, we, i've have a translate button too uh, yeah other, but i mean it's i think it's the same thing if you're looking to translate you're used to seeing stuff like that that I, you know i who knows I'm not sure. I've never even thought about using the translate button from my phone. I'm not even sure it shows up. Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, I just tested it now. It does come up very similarly to this. So it just shows a, a drop down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have access? I know you talked about the translate button before, but I wasn't interested. And now yeah, I'm we... interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have it. Um, think do i have documentation on it i could also just pass you the the code uh, yeah great the code would be plenty but you know if we're going to give access to our web page to people let's give everybody access not just a group yeah and i have not been good about doing this so hey why not I'm going to include, um, let me show you what it looks like. Do you want this as well? I so would think so. This this part that the text that kind of prompts the person. No, that's yeah. right. Okay. Absolutely. Because the code itself from Google brings up just that. But um, I've added that text yeah. to oh, yeah. kind yeah. of try and prompt folks. Um, How good is the translation? Is it automatic that it's Google uh, Translate? It is automatic. I think that they're, am I able to get to their info page from here? Um, let me see if I can pull, I think it's in our Google group, if I remember it, correctly. It, I use it when I travel, um, Google Translate, it's pretty good. Well, the, the the issue though with this is quite different for the interface because when I look at mine on the phone to get to the switch to the to the different language, 
it's at the very bottom. So um, if you have a long page with lots of events, you may not, never see that. Hmm. And that's Whereas, just how the Milo site is naturally built. The sidebar and the menu get pushed to the bottom because except you, for you can't have them together. Well, except for accessibility, now we're seeing a... <laughs> Which, 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 well, that which, floats on the page regardless. That's not, right. although we're putting the code in the sidebar section, it is not physically locating it in the sidebar section. Right. So, it, but it's a different interface issue because it's not floating. It's way, way at the bottom. So nobody would, eat. I mean, a lot of people will never see that. Um, the accessibility menu is floating, but the, right. the translate. translate is fixed to the sidebar. And and that, which is for me on my phone goes way. It's at the very for bottom. all yes for all small devices. That is how the Milo site is divided. The sidebar and the menu get pushed to the bottom. They have to be stacked. Okay, so are you going to share the code? Yes. So you. you drop that. We're all waiting in anticipation. <laughs> I'm looking at our website in French. It's so fun. Okay. So that's in there. I wanted to also show you where this. Here we go. Read more about. Um, the okay, so. All right. Is this first little whatever? Yes, the script. The yeah, long, the word script. Yeah, starting with div class center okay. all the way all down right. to the sl forward slash script. Okay. Um, let me go back to okay. my Milo site. Actually, I was working in this tab. Let's actually work on a different site so that we can. And you'll show us how to put the arrows, switch to another language. Where I actually goes. have it in the code, but I can show you how. Oh, I... you have it in the code. Oh, yeah, the code okay. that I dropped. So simple. So simple. Oh, awesome. Okay, because I did. I put it in just plain, so I can replace it in another time. Right? Yes. Yes, I already have it there. Thank you. For sure. <laughs> let's add it here. Yeah, I don't have anything there. Okay, so let's edit this draft. Going down to the sidebar content section. Um, right now, I just have a heart. Don't know why I have that. Yeah. OK, so I am just going to add it to the top. You can add it directly to your sidebar content section in full HTML um, or in the sidebar embed code section. Regardless, full HTML. Um, I'm just going to add mine to the top. And that's it. So we have switch your language, the arrows, and then this is where the um, code starts for the actual translator. Okay, so, so, so what you put in the chat, it's that whole box, that whole, mm -hmm. okay, all right. Now the, okay. And if anybody has access to, where did I just have it open? Um, to the Google group online, like if you have a Gmail or a, or a Google mm -hmm. account that your um, user is associated with, then you can visit to see. Um, January 20th, 23. Yes, you'll be able to see that email um, online. Or yeah, check your inbox if you still possibly have those. It looks like I do have this documentation, but this this doesn't include the um, switch your language and the arrows. You don't, you don't need that. To, to me, it's so obvious. Yeah, if, if you want to just put the straight uh, widget in there, you can use this um, okay. documentation. Okay. But let me go back. So yeah, I've plugged that in. And let's go down to moderation state to publish. Wait, and just before I publish it, just a reminder. Okay, my sidebar is empty. Let's save. And there we are. Okay. And, and 
and you won't have that administrator thing, so. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's sometimes challenging to get back to English if you. If you've <laughs> selected a language that you're not familiar yeah. with, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jean had asked the question about how accurate is it? I would say that our, the article, the Google, um, which one was it? Developers.google.com was one of the uh, links that I dropped in. I would say that's probably going to do a good job of explaining how good their translations are. I speak Spanish and I've gone through and um, not not you know as a true task but i've kind of casually gone through um some of our pages in spanish and they look good um they do a pretty good job definitely better than uh what google translate was a few years ago when they stopped <laughs> offering this tool to everybody now this tool is only available to um like nonprofits and like teachers or something so we obviously qualify that's why i've made it you know available to all of us um but yeah it it does it makes the button lengths longer in some languages definitely um, yeah but that just is just naturally because um like i know in spanish sometimes a short phrase in english it takes about three or four more words right. in spanish to say the same thing right um but yeah that just gives us some confidence that it's doing a pretty accurate job it's good for your language learning that too. <laughs> I'd rather go visit the country. <laughs> <laughs> I like to, I like to do that, and then challenge myself to figure out what it's telling me. <laughs> I have a couple yeah. questions that yeah. non-related. We can we can go um, off topic. Um, yeah. and, and I'll take your as, name down, Sandy. Just just as a comment, of course, this is obvious, but having the accessibility button is also helping to fulfill our mission of D DEI. So just throwing that out. Um, so uh, this is something you've told us before emphatically, but I don't, I think I'm doing it correctly, but I want to make sure. So if I create an article or an event and I decide, you know, maybe I find a better picture. So I go back into edit. I think I'm supposed to remove the picture, right? You have two options. Yeah, right. Um, remove <laughs> is the quickest uh, as far as like the system will load that change the quickest if you remove it and then upload <laughs> separately your new picture. Mm -hmm. The other option is, um, let me actually just- well, I meant, I meant as opposed one. to edit because edit we don't want to touch, right? You have that option. If you are the the picture owner, owner. Um, well, only and, person that would ever use it. Okay. Well, because I know it had to do with not uh, group, uh, we're uh, doing something the media library. So yeah, if you edit, you do have the option to replace the file. That is an option that is available to webmasters. We do usually ask to avoid that, and okay. so that's, that's why I think yeah, I think that asking. it's probably just easier to avoid it altogether. But the reason we ask folks to avoid it is because if, especially if you don't own the image, right. you can replace it and then it replaces it wherever that image is used. Right. So, um, okay. so yeah, so the alternative to... is a, a, an easy way to go. Yeah, so okay, if you remove and then sure. upload. Mm -hmm. Now, um, maybe we've already been talking about this today, but I was just thinking, um, we were talking about linking. Um, so, and especially that's true with Facebook. I mean, you could have a, you know, a nice graphic, but you're right. There is a, there might be a Facebook, uh, you know, web uh, URL for that. Mm -hmm. And I know I've done it for the slideshow. I don't know that I've ever done it for a picture. I I'm not sure. To add a link to a picture? Yeah. Let's see. Do I have one? Let's add... add a picture and we'll hyperlink it. I use that for a YouTube um, screenshot. So I'll put oh. a photo, you know, the, oh. the, the screen grab of the YouTube video and then I put embed the link to go to the video. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that is, 
a, yeah, a I great use it example. that way. <laughs> so, so when you drop in an image, um, and you know how Sandy said it, even if it's a, a YouTube thumbnail, you can make it, you know, appear as that. But regardless, the same process for any image that you're trying to hyperlink, you'll select it so that you um, are able to add oh, or okay. insert edit link. Oh, just making sure that it's selected and then the same process as if you were hyperlinking text. Oh, so let's just send as Jennifer would say, easy drive. peasy. <laughs> and maybe and I've done insert. that. I just don't remember. So let's test it. What page was that? I think here. Oh, it's on the draft. And we're taken to Easy Voter Guide. And then the system automatically opens it in a new window or a new yeah. tab since it's outside of Milo. Oh, that's what the, oh, oh, but oh, uh, okay. That that was a URL that, uh... Yeah, mm -hmm. I added HTTPS uh, okay. colon forward just slash forward touch. Yeah, it just looked funny. Okay. All right. So it's just like, yeah. So that's that's what the link led to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I had Thank entered. you. Mm -hmm. And then um, my last question is, and I don't know if other people get this, but, you know, I'll be working on the website. <laughs> and I think I may have brought this up before, but you get this obnoxious thing on the top that says something about donate to LWV Education Fund. Oh, is it? That, is there, does everybody that's from get the that? browser? Huh? That's from the browser. From my browser? Yeah, I've noticed that on um, what is it called? Microsoft Edge. Yeah. Oh. It's it's Microsoft Edge just trying. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're trying. Um, I guess it's it's a nice way to um show that they recognize our organization i guess but it is um is it gonna pop up for me i don't get it try it our home page yeah i don't get it every single time but it will usually um say donate to league of women voters yeah i don't know why it's not and mine i think says education fund but mine so does as well so what you're saying is it's nothing to do with national putting that out there. No, putting that out there. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I, yeah, I've only noticed it on um, Microsoft edge and I'm not sure how you can prompt it to come back up, but yeah, it does happen uh -huh. and it's only ever uh, connected to the national league. And I wonder if that's because of our, um, URL because it doesn't show up for our California League. Mm. Yeah, but it but it's definitely um coming from the browser. Huh. I wonder if National in Spain, Microsoft Edge. <laughs> that might not be a bad partnership. Yeah, but okay. I, I wonder if they're actually paying them to collect. Well, hmm. it when I had first seen it, it reminded me of the Amazon Smiles program that used to be around. And so I I don't know exactly how that was run, but I think it was like a essentially like a benevol benevolent program from Amazon to wash away their sins. <laughs> um but right, yeah. It, it was a benevolent like program. Um so I would have, I, that, that's what I was thinking. Amazon smile. Yeah. Right. And then portions of their purchases would be taken as donations. I think that Microsoft Edge is doing something similar where it's just basically just charity and not based on the original organization support, but I'm not sure. Well, th thank you. <laughs> so, so does it take you to the, the League LWV, the USA website to do the donation or do they intervene and do it? No, I think in. they intervene if I if oh. I remember correctly. If it so comes up tried, again, it, it comes so quickly. I I haven't even tried to click it. I don't know. I clicked I... it once, uh, okay. but I I can't. I think it was through them. But yeah, if it comes up again, we'll yeah. And I remember for next time, I'll let you guys know. 
<laughs> well, it could be a big issue. Which ones do they allow this to happen on? You know, it's, some people could get up in arms. Oh, you support this this nonprofit, but not this one. <laughs> it, but do, do you think our users see that when they go on our website? I guess that's what my question was. Not really. on our website. Well, it's right? strictly the Microsoft Edge browser. So how many users yeah. are using All that right. browser? It's okay. how it depends. Okay. But, mm -hmm. But which website? It's the national, right? You're saying, or is it all of our our sites that are connected to? Well, what I'm saying is, when I look at my own local one, you I'm get working, it? working, and I'll see it, and it just it goes by. It's in red, and it just goes by wow. real quickly. And it's just in the address bar. So again, it's associated with the browser. There's nothing that we yeah. can do to make that change if it is through the the browser. Yeah. Huh. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to Sandy's question. Okay, thank you. So this is a question for everyone. Um, I, I'd like to use the content from National's PowerPoint presentation on the Electoral College, abolishing the Electoral College, okay? And I want to use that content to populate content on my website, okay? Because I want to have a section because we are we have some other stuff going on with that. What's the easiest way? Can I, can you take PowerPoint into Canva and then start grabbing photos? I'm just trying to think of what's the easiest way to take slides because I'll take everything but, you know, kind of the, the container around it. Yeah, How? what's the best way? Because I don't really want to modify much. It's just, they have some great graphics. They have, you know, I'd be adding some text and stuff, but what's the easiest way to do that? Using that image something that, well, first of all, is that something we're allowed to do? Do they have any rules about how to use their PowerPoint content? I well, they think. say you can customize it and we're using, you, know, you can customize it. They give you the PowerPoint deck and you yeah. can customize it and do whatever you want with it. So. Okay. Sounds like it's okay then. Yeah. And so you download I, that you have the downloaded PowerPoint? Yeah, it's available on um, the Nationals website on, in the league management section. And you can, and they also have a brochure, a trifold brochure that you can customize. Um, and I've already used it to create a little flyer and stuff like that. So yeah, they let you. That's in Canva, but the PowerPoint, I don't know. Can you upload to Canva? From That's what I was going to check uh, if PowerPoint were an acceptable I thought maybe format. somebody else has, has taken PowerPoint slides and. I don't actually do it. I don't think I would have an example PowerPoint in my oh, files. Okay. I don't think. Um, yeah, I if. Because I know you can go from Canva slides to PowerPoint, you know, and I've done that because our state league provides their, a lot of their state presentations, they'll give it to people on Canva and then you can, and I've used them to create my own presentations. It, it does say here Canva supports PDF, oh, cool. Word, PowerPoint, Excel, or Illustrator. So okay. it's looking good. All right. So then I can take that and then start creating yeah okay yeah, yeah i don't know how customizable the graphics will be once you upload the powerpoint like i don't know if mm -hmm. you can separate all the things but yeah it'll right. at least be a starting point mary joe so <laughs> thank you um yeah. assuming that uh, and i'd have to look at assuming that you know it looks like it's okay to show to the public whatever is on the league page um the easiest thing for me to do, if I were to do it, so on our menu underneath one of our, I don't know if it's voting or something, the sub menu, I've got alternative methods of voting, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've got, of course, ranked choice voting, but I also have something about, um, oh, so I have a page they're called alternative methods of voting. Mm -hmm. It's a lot about ranked choice voting, but I do have some stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So, cool. um, so uh, if you if you keep down going down further, you'll see national popular vote. 
So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would just add the website. But I'm not, I'm now you want to do more than that, but I'm just saying that's one easy thing to do. Well, here's the, there's a rub to it because the content is on the league management site and they don't really have, they don't, national doesn't have like a whole, like all that, all those graphics and everything that they put into this PowerPoint deck is nowhere on their website. As ah. a, okay. They have, so they, and maybe you didn't get it, but they sent out in one of their emails, I don't know, in the last month, um, there's a specific um, form you can fill out if you want to get help on presenting that PowerPoint. They'll oh. actually help you with it. If you want, if you have questions about the PowerPoint, you can actually fill out a form and they will um, respond. Now, I fill out the form because unfortunately the PowerPoint deck is not created, in my opinion, as accessible, for, especially for people with low vision because they didn't use, they used fancy fonts. They yeah. used, you know, it. they didn't follow basic <laughs> <laughs> sort of accessibility. So I was able to change all the fonts, but they had graphics that were so small, even on a big screen, it was hard to read. So I asked if they could provide me with you know, the files, some of them, they actually, you can open up the Excel spreadsheets from within. Yeah, it's, it's great. Um, so it's they want people to use it. They want people to use this stuff. Can we type in national popular vote and see what happens? I'm going to type in electoral process. They have a, they have a presentation on national popular vote too, a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. So go under league management. Yeah. And go under, yeah, you'll find, um, um it be the task force there should be resources there okay. should be there abolishing right the there. electoral college resources mm -hmm. well that's pretty new this came out yeah okay. i can't remember but i was so Graphics. ecstatic to see that they actually gave you a brochure that you can hand out and you can customize it if you okay the going there. resources there you go mm -hmm. and the printed material here, I'll mm -hmm. drop this in the chat. Yeah. Mm. Their league management site is pretty um, pretty full of resources, which is nice. It's just sometimes hard to find them. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. But it's, and then, and then like is... you're doing is you're then responsible for putting it in a format that can then be consumed by the public. Yeah, um, so that's the other here. thing, too. Yeah. But yeah. like, be, it was really nice, nice graphics. If they did that, you know, if one of their points would be, here's a great thing for like, I don't know, press release or, you know, a column on your website. So yeah, so this moonshot thing, and then I don't know, it goes down there. Um, so there was, if I can find oh. that, if I can find that email that had the form, you know, the Google form to fill out, I'll, I'll, share that um uh, with folks because if they'll actually come and i think speak i mean there's they're offering all kinds of stuff so it was buried in some email and i'm like oh look at this so was, was it in that uh a bi-weekly league update yeah it could have been I, if I, I can find if i don't I can always find get it, that yeah if i can find it i'll i'll i'll, I'll share it so anyway Thank you. Mm -hmm. hmm. Awesome. Any other questions? I just wanted to say that the people who are new are asking questions that we think we know the answers to, but we learned we learned more about things that we didn't know. So it's it's really nice to have new people. <laughs> I love it. Great. It's a great resource. Thank you for making me not feel so um, new. Because it, if it's helping you, I feel better that I'm asking questions. Well, you should. Oh, Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. You should. Yeah. It's helping people. Yeah, and we sometimes we forget the options yeah. that we have. <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot to keep track of. <laughs>
Um, Judy, I think I thought you were going to speak. I was going to say something, yes, but how <laughs> much I appreciate your help getting my little problem taken care of. And um, now we can access our web page by hitting our domain name. And that was really a, a problem. Yeah. So it came in the nick of time because now we're publishing our scholarship applications. Awesome. So, yeah. And, and I know there's so much I can do on the web page if I would take the time. But, you know. I do other things. Yeah, no, it makes sense. You can't spend all day on the on the Milo website. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> and I don't think you want to. Uh, but coming yeah. to these sessions, I bet you're you're picking things up and and well, hopefully absolutely. it'll be easier. Unfortunately, you don't always have time for this either. Right. So you know, so I'll be here when I can. <laughs> and we'll 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 take that for sure. <laughs> Good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, everyone, for your questions. And thank you yeah. for hosting the December meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thank you for that reminder. Yeah. And then the last one was posted too. Um, but yeah, December, we had talked about Google Analytics a bit. Um, yes. So yeah, thank you guys, thank everybody, you. for, for yeah, joining you. our session. Um, we'll be back again in two weeks, um, two weeks Thursday. So that'll be the 8th of February. So we'll see each other for sure in the Google group before then, um, because I am hoping for that side menu resolution um, very, very soon. So thank I will you. I will see you guys in email land. Yeah, thanks, everybody. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.